Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I am the mythical some guy. I'm pure pixel, baby. Anyway, welcome back, or welcome to the first time, to my over-analysis of a golden wake. We're starting on chapter two right now, and you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Chapter two is pretty damn good. So there's not much to really make fun of here, because it's kind of hard for me to make fun of a competently well-made and well-executed game. However, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, my god, I'm gonna nitpick until it's funny. So, without further ado, let's skadoodle back to the game. How are those sales going, Banks? Not bad, Doc. Just made another 12 this hour. Now, it's been pretty well established that Alfie is a sales savant when it comes to realty. But seriously, what the hell, Alfie? You're selling a house every four minutes. That's insane. How the hell are you doing that in the mid-1920s? All you got's a damn phone and some gumption. How, how you pulling this off? This is crazy. I mean, at the rate Alfie's going, Merrick just might as well go ahead and fire every other person that's working. Because Alfie's going to have this whole Coral Gables thing sorted out by the end of the damn week. I didn't even bother to do some Google foo about this. Apparently the average realtor sells like 12 houses a year. And now if he's done that in an hour. Seriously, why the hell is he even working for Merrick? Merrick should be working for him, damn it. I knew there was something special about you the minute you stepped off that train, kid. Yeah, Alfie is pretty damn special. He's outpacing modern realtors in the 20s. He's an incredible creature that should just be sitting at his desk and selling property until every single last bit of Coral Gables is sold. Except no, that ain't gonna happen because Merrick naturally has some tasks for Alfie to do because obviously Alfie shouldn't be selling houses. He's too damn good at it. He has to give his other employees a fighting chance. Alfie, good to see you. Please come in. How do you like the new office? It's a bit crowded, but much nicer looking than the one downtown. The success of Coral Gables isn't going to be about money or sales. It's about aesthetics. And keeping black people out. What? Sorry if that sounds inflammatory, but let's be real here. Mr. Merrick was a real man. He was a product of his times. And he said in 1937 that he envisioned a Miami that had all of its black people completely removed from the city limits. Yeah. Again, 1930s, rich white dude. I don't think it should be too startling to find out he is a little bit racist. Well, you've certainly gone above and beyond in that department, sir. There's no need to be so formal. We're all a big family here. Please call me George. So if they're all a big happy family here, I suppose that makes Merrick like the daddy. And Alfie doesn't have a father because his died. So <gasps> that means Merrick's going to be the surrogate father for Alfie. Oh, I'm already tearing up. Those doors are always so beautiful. Fair enough. What was it you wanted to see me about, George? Hopefully it's about those miraculous 12 houses he sold in one hour. Ah, yes, of course. I'm giving you a very special assignment. We've been doing fantastic with sales thus far, but I've decided to try a new approach. I'm calling the project State Days. Each week, we'll bring down a group of people by bus from a different state. Every state? All 48 of them? Yeah, there's only 48 this time. Alaska and Hawaii, they don't state yet. But still, does that mean he's busing people in from like Washington State and California to Florida? That's a hell of a long bus ride. But it won't just be enough to show them around. We need something more. A uh, spectacle. Naturally, Alfie's going to have to find this damn spectacle. Because as we all know, that's what Alfie's good at. It's not the whole selling houses thing. Nah, nah, nah. He's an entertainer. Jesus. You know what? Merrick is just trying to bring Alfie down. He's just using and abusing. If he's reached his quota, Merrick's like, I won't pay him no more commission. So here you go, Alfie. Go find me an entertainer for some weird state day idea I have. Um, or more likely it could just be that Alfie needs some damn quests. Because after all, just playing a guy at the phone selling houses doesn't make for much of an adventure game. Which reminds me. Here you are. The keys to your own company car. It should make getting around town much easier. No fooling? My own car? It's cheaper for us to have you drive yourself around rather than pay for taxi rides. Kind of ruined the moment there, Merrick. Oh, and also, this telegram arrived for you this morning. I was going to send it along with my secretary, but you got here first. 
So Alfie gets a telegram and it turns out it's from his brother. It also turns out that Alfie doesn't like his brother at all. But it doesn't matter, he's in town so Alfie's gonna meet up with him because, well... That's his second quest for the day. And knowing how this game loves the rule of three, that means we need to find one more quest. Oh, wait, it's right here. Old Doc Danners needs Alfie's help. Probably because he's one of the few characters capable of movement in this game. Yeah, I left that in there because I like the sound of the car. Pretty cool. Nevertheless, let's meet Alfie's brother. And bear in mind, Alfie hates his brother. There he is! Beauregard! How nice to see you. Oh, why so formal, Alfred? Aren't you glad to see your brother? Alfie's brother, you kind of bad at body language. It's obvious Alfie don't like you. Of course, I just... Wish I'd had a bit more of a warning is all. Cause then you can make up a convenient excuse not to spend time with him. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Alfie spends some time with his brother, you get to hear a little bit more about their backstory. Basically, Alfie's mama's still alive. Bo, as he's called, apparently lives with mama and is lazy. And that's why Alfie don't like him. Cause you know, Alfie's a hard working son of a gun. And his brother just a freeloading rich kid. Mm, despicable. But hell. At least the brother's helpful because he informs Alfie that there's a couple of wing walkers in that very same diner who could probably make for the spectacle that Alfie needs to impress people from New York to buy houses because that's how it works in the 1920s. Pleasure to meet you, sir and madam. My name is Alfred Banks, but please call me Alfie. How do you do, Alfie? The name's Richard Burns, but everyone calls me Curly. Over there's my wife, Mabel Cody. Pleasure's all mine, Mr. Banks. Who would have thought it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between? But Mabel Cody was a real live person. She was a real wing walker back in the day. She was a niece of Buffalo Bill Cody, who had that circus that people went crazy about back in the day. But nevertheless, she needs some help. Because unfortunately, her little flying circus has encountered three problems that Alfie needs to address. And my god, a golden wake loves the rule of three. Everything's three. Three problems, three tasks, three this, three that. Three, 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 three. You know, this game's starting to affect me. I'm seeing three everywhere now. It's like that one really bad Jim Carrey movie. But nevertheless, the three problems are pretty simple. One, her plane's messed up, so Alfie needs to fix it somehow. Two, they got no damn pilot. You know, Time important for a flying circus. And three, they need some money up front. So Alfie, I guess impressed by the fact that he's met the niece of Buffalo Bill, decides not to go ahead and find any other entertainment. No, no, no. This will do for Merrick. I guess it makes some sense after all. Merrick gave him this task on really short notice. It's almost like he was set up to fail. <gasps> Alfie surrogate father doesn't really love him. Oh no. He's probably jealous America of his mad sales skills. So nevertheless, Alfie can get the money pretty simply. He goes down to the bank, says he works for Merrick, and that's enough for the bank teller to give him 50 bucks, which back in the day was a lot of money. So Alfie's got the money now, everything's great, and then all of a sudden, shit hits the fan. Thank you for banking with us, sir. Have a pleasant day. I'll try my best. Everyone with their hands up. This is a robbery! That's Francisco Gonzalez right there, the designer and maker of this game. I will eat one of my pixels if that's not true. The man's clearly fallen on hard times. He has to rob his own games, folks! He needs a Patreon or something. But no, I don't know if that's true or not. And I'm not going to eat one of my pixels because that would be cannibalism. And that would be wrong. And two wrongs don't make it right. But seriously, am I the only one who sees the uncanny resemblance here? Right, I'm, I'm not making it up, right? You can see it too. Can you? I said put your hands up! Oh looky here, Adventure Game Designers take note. This is an excellent way for an adventure game to deal with violent confrontation. No need for a clunky combat system, no, no, no. He handled this through clever game design. Namely, that dialogue system that's a puzzle system that we encountered earlier on in the game gets used here to talk down this first time offender from robbing this bank. So basically, you gotta make sure you make the right dialogue choices, and it's actually a puzzle, and a pretty clever one. You have to make sure you don't screw up too much, and then maybe you can talk the bank robber out of robbing the bank, or maybe not. It just depends on how good you are with puzzles. Fortunately, I was able to solve this puzzle, and I talked away poor broke Francisco Gonzalez, who's probably gonna live in a swamp now or something. Oh yeah, and guess who else witnessed all this? Not bad, Banks, I'm impressed. 
Finally, a newsworthy story. Real estate agent foils bank robbery. I may or may not include a pun on your last name. I haven't quite decided that yet. I guess because Alfie's lived in New York, he's used to having guns pointed in his face, so he just talks to the reporter about the show that he's going to put on. And speaking of which, he needs to go ahead and work on that. Hello there, my good man. Yes, sir? So our dear pilot friend here informs Alfie that he has thir two, actually. Yeah, no, the rule of three doesn't apply here. They're shaking up the game design. So Alfie has to solve a couple of problems for the mechanic. Basically, he's got to find a rudder, and he's got to find a bit of the engine. Because, you know, this airfield isn't very well supplied, apparently. Who knew? But first, we gotta help Dammers, because we forgot about him. And in order to show off the amazing future of Coral Gables, I'll need a volunteer from the crowd. Who would like to assist me? I'll do it. Fantastic. Now, young man who I can assure everyone I have never seen before today, what is your name? Now, this seems like a very short-sighted con. If these people actually buy houses because of what's about to happen here, don't you think they're going to eventually see Dammers and Alfie together? And don't you think people are going to mention how Alfie's a hotshot salesman for Merrick, and that the guy who sold them her house also worked for Merrick, and that maybe the whole reason why they bought this house was because of a convoluted, weird display that impressed them? Let's watch that. Fantastic. Now just wait one second while I get the model. And here we go. Gentlemen, behold the future of Coral Gables. The streetcar. What the? Ah! Doc, are you all right? Well, that certainly went off with a bang, didn't it? Show's over, folks. You can see yourselves out. Hey, who would have thunk it, but that bit of wood that gave old Doc Dammers a mild concussion is actually a perfect bit of wood for an airplane rudder. Huzzah! Although it does beg the question, are there no hardware stores in Miami that sell big pieces of wood? But never mind that. Alfie has a rudder now. All he needs is a bit of the engine to fix the plane. So he talks to his brother, who, like the little bitch he is, and I mean like a dog, because he's taking him on a car ride and he's excited about it, just like a dog would be, down to the pier where there's a biplane that has a magneto that will work the plane and Alfie knows this because he knows a lot about engines because he sells real estate and he just convinces his brother to distract the guard and yeah you see what he does he steals the bed and goes back to the mechanic who's just standing around there hoping I guess in vain that someone will show up and magically give him every part he needs to fix this plane I guess there's no other planes that need to be fixed but that's it now all Alfie has to do is go down to the gentleman's club and I don't mean a gentleman's club like a gentleman's club today I mean like a gentleman's club like where gentlemen and stand around and talk and lo and behold there's a pilot there i feel this may be a silly question on my part but are you a pilot guilty as charged zachariah flynn's the name but everybody in the know calls me flyboy i know what you're thinking guy was this dude real and the short answer is i, I don't know my google foo has failed me and i really couldn't find a zachariah flynn who was a world war one ace fighter for america so I'm just going to go ahead and say, I don't know. But what I'm also going to say is that this Zachariah Flynn needs Alfie's help. He'll agree to being a pilot for Mabel's Flying Circus, but Alfie needs to come up with some advertising to promote it. So he goes back down to where the real estate's done and finds that lady who was a receptionist, except now she's an artist because she's got a promotion, no longer a secretary. Now she does the marketing for the real estate development. And he gets her to mock up some designs and well it's a puzzle it's an adventure game of course it's a puzzle you gotta make sure you make the right design based off of contextual clues so you gotta think here folks and then you get it right and then he's like okay that's enough i'll do it i guess he doesn't need to be paid his ego just needs to be pet so you go back to mabel and you're like yo i got everything fixed and they're like awesome i will get everything ready and yeah that's it this is it are you ready I think so, Flyboy. Are you kidding? I was born ready! But unfortunately, Alfie can never have a passive moment in his own game. No, unfortunately, the driver of the plane that Mabel's gonna climb up is shit-faced. So Alfie's gonna have to drive the car now. And sure enough, it's a puzzle. And like all puzzles, it can be solved. So let's enjoy the solving of said puzzle together. Hoo-wee! We're kicking up a heck of a lot of dust! 
Is that gonna be a problem? Nah, makes things more exciting, like a cattle stampede. Dang, you weren't in the right position, Banks. If I slow down anymore. Oh no, she's lost! Thanks! Do something! I can't hold on much longer! She won't be able to climb up the ladder if she doesn't... We're going too fast. Mabel, step on the car route so you can get your footing back. Yee-haw, that did her! Thanks, Alfie! So Alfie's a big, fat hero now. Surely, as we fast forward through time and space, he'll be happy. Because, you know, did a lot of good today. So, they finally gave me my own sales team after I practically had to beg them for it. Probably because they know you're going to demoralize anyone who works under you, Alfie. You're too damn good at selling houses. No kidding. I'm glad to hear they finally come around. You get your own office, too? No, not yet. Ah, well. Things will work themselves out. I mean, it's only been, what? Three years. How many houses are there to sell in Coral Gables? Because according to my calculations, Alfie alone should have sold like 26,000 houses in one year. And other three years, I mean, are there hundreds of thousands of houses in Coral Gables that need to be sold? Or is that 12 houses in one hour thing just a one-off that I'm just harping on too much? Hmm. Probably the former. Four, actually. <laughs> well, you can't expect to become an overnight success. Especially not with such a risky project. Have they at least given you a nicer car? No, I'm still driving that old green heap around. Ah, I see. Well, business talk aside, how's your brother doing? Good, as far as I know. I haven't really spoken to him in a couple of months. Last I heard, he was going back to visit our mother. Wouldn't surprise me if he was asking to borrow some money. But then that's Bo for you. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth and spoiled rotten ever since. So this is Alfie's BFF. Yeah, this guy right here who just hangs out in the men's club with him. Kind of sad. In fact, Alfie's life in general is kind of sad. Yeah, sure, he's capable of selling houses like no one else, but he hates his brother. He doesn't seem to have any love interest. He just hangs out in the men's club and pines after Merrick. Oh, God. I feel so sorry for you, Alfie. You need something in your life. Can't even drink. Oh, God. What are you doing with your time, Alfie? Are you on drugs? Alfie, look at me in the eye and, well, go see Merrick's mother. Because that's what you have to do. Go down, talk to Merrick, and he tells you something's going on. I just wanted to say that over the past few years, you've been extremely valuable to us. Not only have you helped immensely with establishing Coral Gables, you've also managed to climb the ranks in the office in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, in four years he got his own sales team. I don't know if that's good or bad or not. I've never been in real estate. In any case, we're getting close to incorporating Coral Gables as a city, and that requires a special team. A team I want you to be a part of. I'm honored, sir. As I'm sure you've heard, we're only a day away from launching our electric streetcar line. We'll be having a ceremony to commemorate the launch. But we'll also be making a very important announcement. The new mayor of Coral Gables. M mayor Okay, now, I don't quite know how to say this, but this is a part of the game that I find a bit confusing. For some reason, Alfie's got into his little salesman head that he's going to be the mayor of Coral Gables. And we all know that ain't historically accurate. Yes, every new city needs a mayor. Since we're not a very big city, we have the luxury of foregoing elections and having the first one appointed. I think announcing the mayor along with the streetcars will bring heaps of publicity. Wouldn't you say so, Miss Douglas? I've already got most of the article written. Just need to punch it up a bit with the details. Why not bring in someone well-known to make a speech at the ceremony? That would certainly make an impression. I thought you might suggest something like that, Banks. Did you have anyone in mind? Not for certain, but I'm sure I can find someone in town. Of course Alfie's going to find someone awesome, and of course I'm going to tell you that dude was a real dude, and of course I'm going to tell you it's historically accurate, but yeah, okay. I just knew this hard work would all pay off. Ah, oh, George, you sneaky old egg. Alfred Banks, first mayor of Coral Gables. If only you could see me now, father. 
He'd probably wonder why the hell you think you're going to be the mayor. Again, I am deeply confused. This comes out of nowhere. Up till now, Alfie's been a fairly rational guy. But now, because they're mentioning that there's going to be a mayor, Alfie thinks he's going to be the mayor? I don't know. I'm really confused because you'd think Alfie would have some common sense and realize that if he was going to be the mayor, they would have told him then and there. I get that Alfie feels like he's been underappreciated, but this whole mayor thing, there's no reason for him to think this. <sighs> Oh well. So Alfie goes down to the Venetian pools and finds a William Jennings Bryan who was a real dude for real. I mean, is he really all that obscure? The dude ran for president a bunch of times. He had the whole cross of silver thing, populism, Scopes monkey trial. I feel like if you know anything about American history, turn of the last century, you should know something about him. Or maybe you've seen him portrayed in that movie about the Scopes monkey trial. So yeah, you have to convince him through that awesome puzzle dialogue system that a Golden Way cat. Has. And naturally, Alfie being the smooth talker that he is, gets old William Jennings don't believe in evolution and thinks the silver standard's the best for the working man to do a speech at the streetcar slash mayor festival? We'll go with that. And so you can all look forward to a bright future in this, the city beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. May I say it's been an honor and a privilege to have you here with us today. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude and launch our fleet of streetcars, bringing Coral Gables into the modern age, there's one more matter to attend to. I want to take this opportunity to thank Alfie Banks. Without his hard work, Coral Gables wouldn't even be close to where it is today. Which brings me to the last order of business. As you all know, we have been incorporated as a city, and every city deserves a mayor. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to announce the first mayor of the city of Coral Gables. Edward Doc Dammers. <gasps> His first name was Edward. Thank you, George. It's an honor. People of Coral Gables, allow me to express my excitement at this wonderful opportunity. As your mayor, I guarantee a standard of living like no other. Would you excuse me? So Alfie's all sad and emo about the whole he not a mayor thing, which, again, why does he think he was going to be the mayor? You think they would have told him before the announcement? It wouldn't have been something they would have just sprung on him. <sighs> All right, so for whatever reason, Alfie really thought he should have been the mayor, so we're just rolling with that. So fast forward a few years, and Alfie's sad and hanging out at an awesome dance club. I mean, look at these people. They are having fun in here, and Alfie's a sourpuss. Good Lord, he needs some corn liquor in him like that dude who couldn't drive the car for Mabel. I've been keeping a low profile on purpose, if you must know. Oh, come on. You can't still be sore about being snubbed for mayor, can you? How did you... I'm a journalist, Banks. It's my job to notice things. It's been over a year. Can't you let it go? Well, obviously that can't happen. After all, Alfie needs some conflict with Merrick. It's just, I feel like all the work I've put in over the past few years has meant nothing. You're just selling houses, Alfie, and hopefully making pretty good commission. I mean, what more do you want? Honestly, what do I have to show for it? I came down here to restore my family name, to honor my father's legacy. Alfie, have you been doing this for free? Alfie, sweetie, you should have some wads of cash lying around. And know what you can do with those wads? You can start up your own real estate firm. You're really good at selling houses, Alfie. You should do fine. And instead, I've just been going around running errands like a fool. I feel like that's kind of meta there. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Banks. If you're looking for a pat on the back every time you make a sale, Merrick's outfit might not be for you. Not to say he's ungrateful, he's just extremely focused and he knows how to take advantage of his resources. Take advantage is right. Anyway, I hate to put a damper on your pity party, but I came here tonight as a reporter, and I think you ought to know there's a big storm headed this way. And she's not lying, so on that note, Alfie leaves the party and hey, the chapter ends, and so ends this part of Overanalyzed Adventures. As always, thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I'll leave you on this note.